welcome back everybody to the Coos Art Museum's online art classes and today we're going to play around with some paint. Whatever kind of watercolor paint you have can work just fine. I'm using a Prang paint. This is one that's really popular in our public school systems so a lot of kids have these in their stashes but if you have fancier paint you can use that. If you have less fancy paint you can play with that. We're just playing with some color. So of course you're going to need paint. You're going to need some paper to color on or to paint on and I would recommend to use a thicker paper like a cardstock or if you have watercolor paper this would work great. I'm using a mixed media so it's nice and thick. We're going to need some paint brushes. I have a couple of different sizes. I have a bigger one and a smaller one whatever size you have. I have a little piece of paper towel that I can use to wipe up any kind of messes and clean up my brushes. I'm going to use just a regular pencil with a nice eraser on the back to kind of sketch in my design. And then I have a little cup of water right here. And that's all you need. For this painting, we're going to be creating one of my favorite animals, which is the panda bear. They're so cute and happy, and I thought it would be fun for us to paint. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sketch out our panda bear, but we wanna sketch really lightly. If you push hard with your pencil, you're going to leave a deep, dark mark in there, and it's gonna be hard to erase that out of there. So I draw just as lightly as I need to, just so that I can see it, but it's really easy to erase. So for the first shape I'm going to do is I'm going to do the head of the panda, which is kind of a circle-y, oval -y shape. If you had to put some points to it, maybe towards the sides, kind of like a, if you took a diamond shape and you filled it with a whole bunch of air, so it was almost a circle, but almost a diamond shape. That's the shape for the panda's head. Now as these sides kind of come up here, we're going to put his ears, one right here and one right here. And we're going to use little half circle shapes. Again, I'm pushing really lightly with my pencil. So I have one there and I have one right over here. Now the fun thing about this is depending on how you color this panda bear, he can be a panda bear, he can be a grizzly bear, he could be a black bear, and you could not color him at all and leave him as like a polar bear. So we have this kind of roundish, circle-y diamond shape with two ears. And now we're gonna put in his eyes. So right about here where, this, where these ears are ending, I'm gonna come right into the middle and I'm just going to very lightly block in two circles. Those are gonna be where his eyes are. Now with our panda bear, we're gonna have these big masks, like little circles around there. But we're gonna wait until we get to the actual coloring point to to put those in. And then I'm going to put in his nose. I'm going to come right in between his eyes and then I'm going to come down almost halfway between here and here. And I'm going to put a rounded triangle shape. So here's the flat of the triangle. And instead of bringing it up, I'm going to round it down. But you can kind of see how that looks like a triangle. See, so it has a point here, a point there, and a point there, but it's all rounded. No, no big points. And then right underneath at this bottom point, I'm just gonna draw a little line down and then make a super flat, like W shape. Looks like a, the W just got stepped on by a giant. And there's his little mouth. And that is about all of his face. But I'm gonna put him just a little bit more detail on his ears. So right up here, I'm just gonna put a little loop right inside there and one right over there. So now I'm gonna take my eraser and any lines that are kind of messy or have too many lines on them, I'm gonna clean up. Just so it's not super messy because we wanna keep the white of his fur nice and white. And you can either use your hand to brush it away or if you have a clean dry towel, you can use that to brush it away. So now that we have our little panda bear sketched in, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the coloring or the painting part. If you're not yet happy with how your panda bear looks or the shape, just pause this video and I will wait for you and then we can start painting together. And you'll see I have lots of different colors in here and we're tempted to go right into the nice black here. But before I jump into the black, I wanna add a little bit of shadow to his white fur. So we wanna do that first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm actually going to dip it right here in this purple. You can see right there, it's this nice purple color. And I want just a little bit of purple 
and a lot of water. So I'm going to put a lot of water. These are called wells. That means you can fill it up with water like a, like a water well. And you can dilute your paint down so it's a little bit thinner. That way it's not as strong of a color. If I had just painted straight out of here, I would get a really, really deep, dark color, which wouldn't look so great for a shadow on a white panda bear's face. But if I take a little bit of that color and then mix it with a bunch of water, I'll get a nice color right there. Maybe I'll even take a little bit of this red, just a little bit, and put it in there to make it more like a, a bit of a magenta. You can kind of see. You'll see over here, these are ones that I had used before and they've dried up and I can still use these paints if I put my paintbrush on there. It just wakes that paint up. So that's what will happen with this one too if I don't use it right away. So once it's the color that you like, and if you want to, you can test it like up at the corner of your paper. You can just put a little test right there and see if that's too dark for you if you need to. You can lighten it up a little bit. You can add a little water. See how adding just a little bit more water? How it changes that? Now here, let me show you. If I take just straight out of this purple, look how dark that is. So you definitely want to play around with lightening up your colors. Watercolor is as much painting with water as it is with painting with paint. All right, so I like this shade right here. And I'm gonna put my palette right here so I can use my hand to kind of hold my paper down a little bit. And I wanna put some shadow in here. So any place you put shadow, one is gonna show you where your, where your light source is, but two, it's also going to push things back. So I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow right underneath his smile, just a little bit there. It almost looks like I'm giving him lipstick. Now it's too dark, so I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm dabbed off any excess water, and I'm just gonna go over top of that, and I, you'll see it's just picking up some of that, that paint so that it lightens it up even more. So there's a little bit right there, so that pushes that back. I'm gonna go back and pick up some paint here and I'm gonna put a little bit right between his eyes. I wanna push this nose forward, so I wanna push this back. And again, I'm gonna dab off my excess paint and I'm just gonna smooth that out. Now, if you find that this is super dark, maybe it's this color here and you, you think you just turned your panda into a raccoon, well then you know you need to water down your paint. And this, you'll learn how to do this. The more you paint, you'll get better and better and better at this. And then I wanna put just a little bit of shadowing right around the side. So again, you'll see that my shadow color is almost clear water. It just has just a little bit of pigment to it. And when this dries, you, you almost won't even see it. And we want this to dry before we go back in and add in our black for our masks of our panda. Because if we don't, then anywhere the paper's wet, that watercolor is gonna go spooshing everywhere. So you want your, your paper to be really dry before you add any dark colors in there. So you'll see I've kind of softened around the edges. I brought some edges down around here. However you want to do it. And if you wanna skip this part, you totally can if you don't wanna add shadow. I just find it's easier to add shadow now than it is after I get everything painted. And you might see I put my, my uh, paintbrush back in just plain water. I'm just kind of going through and just kind of moving things around if I have too harsh of an edge. And I don't want to turn him all purple, that's not the point. I just want just a little bit of this paint to add as a shadow, just a little bit. Yeah, too much color, you'll turn him into a gummy bear, which might be a fun thing to do. But now we're gonna let this dry nice and dry. So there's a couple things you can do. One, you can wait, which could take a long time. And the second is you can use a little hair dryer. So I have one right here, and I'm gonna blow dry this, but I'm not gonna videotape it because it's really loud. And you'll know it's pretty dry when the paper isn't shiny anymore. So if you look over here, you see how that part of my paper is still very shiny? That, that paint is wet. Where this one, you can't see the shiny there, so it's pretty dry. So now it's time to add in my patches around my eyes, color his nose, and his ears. This is the fun part. 
See, if we were taking a photograph of a real panda bear, we would use a really dark black color to do this. But because this is art, you can do any color that you want. So maybe you'd like to use this super dark purple. Maybe you'd want to do blue. Maybe you want to do red. Whatever color you want, you can mix that up a little bit. So you can have fun deciding that. I'm going to go ahead and go in with black just because I want a little traditional panda. So I'm taking my black paint and I want it to be nice and saturated. That means the color content I want it to be really high. Where with the purple, we put a lot of water with a little bit of paint. I'm putting a lot of paint with a little bit of water. So you'll see here, it's nice and thick and dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, with my paintbrush, draw a nice kind of ovaly, looks kind of like an avocado shape, all the way around. I'm not gonna color his eyes in yet. So I'm going to go around my eye circles and paint that in. So there's one shape. I'm going to do the exact one over here, but going the other way. So there's that one. You can see they're a little bit different, so I can go back and kind of fix one if I want it to. Grab in a little bit more paint because I'm starting to run low on paint on my paintbrush. And go nice and slow because you can always add more paint. But if I go too fast and go whoop off the side, it's going to be hard for me to fix and I might have to turn him into a black bear. You also see that I'm using the very pointy point of my paintbrush. That way I can get a really fine line. Instead of a nice thick line. Sometimes when we start painting all we have is the craft paintbrushes, those little plastic ones. So if that's all you have, better than nothing. But when you get a chance, once you can go back into stores, that might be something you'd uh, look for to upgrade your art supplies is to get a nice little paintbrush. This is really inexpensive, a couple of dollars at, a, at the if you go to the Art Connection. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint his ears. And I'm not going to paint right away the inside of his ears. I'm just going to pa paint the outside loop right now. All the way around. So there's the one little ear. I'll grab some more paint. I'm gonna paint that other loop. A trick you can do is if you need to, you can rotate your paper. If it's getting hard to reach a spot, just turn your paper around until it feels more comfortable. Our hands sometimes get comfortable in making a certain kind of loop, and it's hard for us to do the opposite one. So if we can flip our paper around, that really helps. I've had a couple people ask me, why do I paint with this hand? Most people paint with this hand. That's because I'm left-handed. But left-handed or right-handed, anyone can learn to do art. It just takes practice, practice, practice. And there we have two ears. So now I'm gonna go back in here and add in his nose. A little rounded triangle. Now here's a trick. When you're coloring this in, leave a little spot right in the middle white. It gives a little shine on his nose. I think it's really kind of cute. All right, our panda is almost done, but we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna paint his eyes and the inside of its ears. So I'm gonna rinse out my paintbrush because you always wanna have a nice clean paintbrush. So you'll see my water's getting all dark and painty, but I want to make sure that my paintbrush is clean. So if I go like that and the drop is still kind of muddy looking, you need to rinse, rinse, rinse. Take good care of your art supplies and they'll last a long time. And also another tip is don't leave your paintbrush stuck in water because that will really ruin it fast. Once he starts getting a little bit clearer, you can take your little paper towel and just kind of push the last little bit of water out of there. 
and that's just about clean. So I'm going to let this dry with a hair dryer. And there we go. You can see there's still just a few places on my panda bear that are wet, but for the most part he's dry. So I'm going to switch to a smaller brush, get it nice and wet, and I'm going to jump into this brown on my paint. I'm going to bring this brown over to my well, and then I have a little bit of black here, and I'm going to mix these two together, and I'll get a nice dark brown. It's always nice to mix your paints on the wet, on these wells and not in the in the cake pans themselves. Otherwise, you'll end up with some messy pans, which you can, you can clean up, but it wastes a little bit of paint. So if you can keep your mixing into these wells, you'll keep your colors nice and clean. I want to do something fun. I'm even going to pull in a little bit of this purple and put this purple in there. Try different kinds of colors and see what you get when you mix them up. All right, I'm going to put that right in the center of his eyes. You can bring it right up to the black if you like, or you can leave a little bit of white. I'm going to leave just a little bit of white and some of the spots that kind of look like his eyelids. And I'm going to go over here. Do the same thing. You find with a nice thinner brush like this, you can get even smaller spots. So there's that. And then I'm going to take this paint and I'm going to fill in the inside of his ears. So there's just a little bit of color difference. Now I'll just add a little interesting things to your painting. like that. Now if you have a thin thin brush go right up on that point and I'm going to just very carefully color in his mouth. If you don't have a thin brush you could use a pen to do this or a colored pencil something that has a nice point to it. You can even take and make little tiny fur marks all the way around that circle diamond shape just like this to make little hair marks just tiny ones not too crazy or it looks like he's having a bad fur day kind of going in the direction that the fur would grow so when you get up to the top here some of it goes this way and some of it goes that way I might add just a little bit of ruffle f right there between his eyes and maybe just a few ruffles of fur right here on the sides of his nose. There we go. We are just about done. We're going to do one more thing. But I have to wait for this to be completely dry. So let me get my, my hair dryer out and dry this out again as soon as I clean my paintbrush. So for this part, he has to be really dry so you can see... The inside of his eyes are not shiny. There's still a little bit of wet on his ear. His ear was very wet. But his eyes have to be dry. And you can even do the finger test where you touch it with your finger. And if no paint comes up, then you're pretty good. So I want to put some shines in his eyes. And for that, I'm going to use a color pencil. Oh, yeah, it's honey, itty bitty color pencil. Because I, I guess I use this one a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in a little circle. Right there and it's just going to give him a little bit of shine on his eyes you don't want to fill the whole thing in but if you look at it in the mirror at your eyes you'll see that your eyes reflect the light and sometimes you can see the light bulb in your room or the sun and you can see some of those you can also use this to kind of add a little reflection on the inside of his ears where maybe the light is kind of shining on that you put a little bit of that under his eyes if the light is shining on on his fur a little bit it's wherever you think it might work the more you experiment the better you're going to get you might think oh i ruined this picture but you never ruin anything if you learn so if you do something and it doesn't work out that one time well the next time you try to draw something similar you'll remember that and you can try something different but there we go we have our finished super 
cool panda bear that we painted. If you drew up your own panda or maybe even painted your own panda with us, I'd love to see a picture of it. So make sure to tag the Coos Art Museum in any of your social media posts. If there is an animal or something special that you'd like to learn how to draw, let me know in the comment section below. We'll put that on our list. I want to thank everyone who's been sharing these videos, families that have been telling me that your guys are drawing together. I love that families draw together and create art together. Don't forget to wash your paintbrushes and your hands and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.